Hi, today we're looking at the first part of lesson 11.4 on normal distributions. The essential question that we're going to answer is how can you use the normal distribution to explain where data values fall within a population? So let's get started. We did talk a little bit about the normal distribution and the empirical rule last chapter. Remember that the graph of a normal distribution has a bell shape. It's symmetrical about the mean. The mean is abbreviated with the Greek letter mu, and the mean is always in the center of the curve. So there is our mean. The sigma here stands for standard deviation. The empirical rule tells us what percent of the data values lie within one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. We know that about 68% of all data values fall within one standard deviation of the mean. So if you go one standard deviation below up to one standard deviation above, that is 68% of all the data values. About 95% of all the data values fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So that's two standard deviations below the mean to two standard deviations above the mean. So that's 95% of our data. And about 99.7% of all data values fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So if we go out to three standard deviations, that would probably be like way out here, that would be 99. 0.7%. So these three percentages, these are what make up the empirical rule. The empirical rule tells us 68% of the values are within one standard deviation, 95% of the values are within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the values are within three standard deviations of the mean. We can use those percentages from the empirical rule to break up the curve into smaller sections. And we're going to need these percentages throughout this whole lesson, so make sure you get these filled in in your notes. Remember again that the mean is the center of our distribution, and if we go out one standard deviation, so from the mean to one standard deviation above the mean, that is 34% of our data. From one standard deviation above to two standard deviations above, that's 13.5% of the data values. From two to three standard deviations is 2.35% of the data value. And above three standard deviations, so outside my three standard deviations, that's 0.15%. So if we look at those four percentages here to the right of the mean, you'll notice that when we add those four numbers together, we do get 50%. 50% of the data is going to be um, above the mean, and then the other 50% is below the mean. Remember too that the bell shape curve is symmetric. So if you can just memorize those four percentage numbers to get the left side of the curve below the mean, it's just a mirror image of the right side of the curve. So now let's practice finding percentages. So we could have a question like, what percent of the data values are between the mean and two standard deviations? So what we have to do is we have to find the section of the curve and then we have to add those numbers together. So I'm looking for from the mean to two standard deviations above the mean, and it's positive two. So we're looking at those that section of the curve, and now just take your two numbers, so 34%, add 13.5% to that, and we get 47.5. So 47.5% would be our final answer here. What percent of the values are between negative three standard deviations and the mean? So again, I find that negative three standard deviations is right here. The mean is my center. And then we just need to add together the sections, the smaller sections that are between those two. So I can see there's a 2.35%, 13.5%, and 34%. So we go ahead and we add those numbers together, and that ends up being... Uh, 49.85. So 49.85% would be our answer there. 
For the last one, let's go ahead and look at the percentage of data values that are between negative two standard deviations and positive one standard deviations. So I'm looking from negative two to positive one. Again, look at the percentage values that are in between there, and we just need to add together the three numbers. So I have my 13 and a half, 34, and 34. So we add all those together. And that totals 81 and a half. So 81 and a half percent of all the data values fall between two standard deviations below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. Here's a try now, just like example one, that I want you to try on your own. You're gonna answer what percent of the values are between negative one standard deviation and positive three standard deviations. So go ahead and pause the video and find the total percent in that value. Ready, pause the video. All right, so your answer should be 83.85%. You can see I highlighted on my graph, negative one to positive three, and then I just added together these four numbers and got 83.85%. Now that we've practiced using the normal curve to find the percentages of various sections, we're ready to solve a real world problem. An example of an early application of statistics was in the year 1817. A study of chest circumferences among a group of Scottish men exhibited an approximately normal distribution. Their chest circumferences ranged from 33 to 48 inches with a mean chest circumference of 40 inches and a standard deviation of two inches. Use the empirical rule and remember the percentages from the empirical rule, 68, 95, 99.7 to help you understand the distribution of the chest circumferences in the study. When we're doing a real world example involving a normal distribution, in order to set up your curve, you need to identify what is the mean and what is the standard deviation. And that information has to be given to you in the question. So here it tells us that the mean chest measurement is 40 inches. Go ahead and put the mean in the center of your normal distribution. So 40 inches goes right there in the middle. And then our standard deviation is two inches. So that means if our standard deviation is two inches, for one standard deviation above, we just add two to 40. So 40 plus two would be 42. And then another one, add two again, we'd be at 44, then 46. Then do the same going the other way. From 40, subtract two to get one standard deviation below, we'd be at 38 then 36, then 34. So we fill in those numbers, and then we're gonna go ahead and put in the percentages that we memorized. Remember this first big section is 34%. Then we have 13.5%. And then we have our 2.35%. And outside of three standard deviations is the 0.15%. And then we can just mirror that over on the other side. So the first step of solving a real world empirical rule question is to set up your curve. Just draw a bell shaped curve, put your mean in the middle, and then go three standard deviations on each side of the mean and just count by whatever the standard deviation is. Here it was two inches. So I counted up by two for the right side of the mean and down by two for the left side of the mean. After you've filled in the values and the percentages on your normal distribution, you'll be ready to answer some questions involving that. Here, I just took the same curve that we just drew in the previous slide, and I just kind of put it up here. I typed them in. And now, again, we had that mean of 40, so you can see my 40s in the middle. Standard deviation is 2. Now we're ready to answer some questions about it. For example, about what percent of men had chest measurements between 38 and 42 inches? Now you just go to your curve, you find 38, you find 42, and then you can just add those two percentages together. 34 plus 34 is 68%. So 68% of men in the population had chest measurements between 38 inches and 42 inches. Now let's look at what percent of the population had chest measurements between 36 inches and 42. So here I'm just kind of adding one more section. So I already know that that's 68% um, between 38 and 42. Let's just add 13 and a half to that 68. 
And when we do that, we end up with 81.5%. Next, what percent of men had chest measurements between 36 and 46 inches? So again, 36 to 46 now is the section that we just looked at, but we're adding all the way out to here. So we know that from here to here was that 81.5%. Now we just have to add the two additional sections. So take 81.5 plus 13.5 plus 2.35, add all that together, and we end up with 97.35%. About 95% of the men in the population had chest measurements between what two numbers? Here, you're going to see a lot of questions that have to do with the empirical rule measurements. Remember, the empirical rule itself is the 68, 95, 99.7. So the 95% there is the two standard deviations from the mean. So here, we just need two standard deviations on each side of the mean. So my mean is here. Two standard deviations below is 36. Two standard deviations above is 44. So that means 95% of the men in the population had chest measurements between 36 and 44 inches. Now for our next question, what would you expect the biggest chest measurements to be for the 0.15% of men with the smallest chest measurements in the population? So a key thing that we're looking at here is we are looking for the 0.15% of men with the smallest chest circumference. So you'll find that 0.15% right here on the left side of my curve. That's the smaller end is to the left of the mean. And we want the biggest chest measurement for that 0.15. So the biggest would be the upper edge of that. So that would be right here at 34 inches. For our final question here, what would you expect the smallest chest measurements to be for the 2.5% of men with the largest measurements in the population? So here I'm looking for 2.5% of the largest. Now if we take 0.15 and we add 2.35 to that, you're going to end up with 2.5. So 2.5% is just these two added together. So what would the smallest chest measurement be for that upper 2.5%? So the smaller end would be this edge here, and that would be 44 inches. Here is a try now very similar to the last example. We have a set of data with a normal distribution that has a mean of 35 and a standard deviation of 5. Remember that before you answer the questions below, you need to fill out the curve. So draw a bell-shaped curve, you put the mean in the middle, and with the standard deviation of five, that's just your counting pattern. So go five above to get one standard deviation above, so we're at 40, then 45, then 50, and then do um, the other direction, so we'd be at 30, then 25, then 20. And now that we have those numbers filled in, I would like you to pause the video and try to answer these questions on your own. Ready? Go ahead, pause your video. All right, so here are the answers. Hopefully you noticed that the first and second question gave the numbers right out of the empirical rule. Remember that 68% falls within one standard deviation of the mean. So if we just go to the mean and we go one standard deviation out, on each side, you can see that is 30 to 40. The 95% is the two standard deviations. So just go out another standard deviation, and that's the 25 to 45. And then the last question, we did need to just add together some percentages. So above 40, I just took the 13 and a half, the 2.35, and the 0.15, add that up, and you get 16% of all of the data values are above 40. Here's one more empirical rule question that I'd like to go over with you from start to finish. You're going to see questions very similar to this on your homework assignment. The times required for a group of students to complete a physical fitness obstacle course result in a normal curve, and the mean time is 21 minutes and the standard deviation is 4. Every empirical rule problem that you start, you should first draw the curve 
and then go ahead and fill in three standard deviations on each side of the mean. Here we're told that the mean is 21 minutes. The mean always goes right at the center of your curve. And the standard deviation is four, which means we need to go up by fours. So 21 plus four is 25, add four, 29, add four again, and we're at 33. Then to get below the mean, you just subtract four. So 21 less four is 17. 17 minus four is 13, and 13 minus four is nine. So now that I have those numbers filled in, now we need to go ahead and fill in the key percentage values. So remember just one side of the curve, there's the four numbers. We have 34%, then 13.5%, then we have our 2.35%, and finally 0.15%. Then go ahead and just reflect that to the other side of the curve. So now that we have all of our percentage values filled in, we're ready to answer the questions. What percent took longer than 29 minutes? Longer than 29 minutes, so again, find 29 minutes. Longer than 29 minutes, we just add up the sections to the right of 29. So we're gonna add 2.35 plus 0.15, and when you add that together, you'll find that's 2.5%. What percent took less than 29 minutes? Here's a little shortcut for you. Since we just figured out that 2.5% was more than 29 minutes for less than, that's just the rest of the curve. If you add all of those percentages together, we're at 100% of the population. So here, if we want less than 29, that's 100 less that last section that we just added, less the 2.5%. So do 100 minus 2.5, and that is 97.5%. Now, if you wanted to add together all of the numbers here, you would also get 97.5%. It would just be a lot of numbers to add together. For the next question, we're looking for what percent took between 13 and 29 minutes. Let's find 13 right here, 29, and you'll notice that here is my mean, 13 is two standard deviations below the mean, and 29 is two standard deviations above. So while you could certainly add together those four numbers, you wouldn't have to here because exactly two standard deviations of the mean, we know that's always 95%. Again, if you were to take a calculator and add 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13 and a half, you would also get 95%. Now, what percent took between 13 and 25 minutes? So here we're looking at just a little smaller section, and that's just three numbers to add together. So we could do 13 and a half plus 34 plus 34, and that adds up to 81 and a half percent. Next, what percent took longer than 17 minutes? So longer than 17 minutes, let's go ahead and find 17 minutes here. Longer than 17 minutes, here's a little shortcut. Notice that longer than 17 is really just all of the numbers to the right. But remember that the curve is symmetrical. So that means that half of the bell, so from here on up, that's 50% of the data. So 21, any number past 21 is 50% of the data. Now I really just have this extra 34%. So do 34 plus 50, and that is equal to 84%. Again, if you wanted to add together all of those numbers, you could take a calculator, do 34, 34, 13 and a half, 2.35 and 0.15, add those together, you would also get 84%. This last question here is kind of tricky. What was the minimum time the top 16% of participants got? Now, I'm gonna show you this two ways. Depending on how you interpret this, normally the top would be those above the mean. Like if it was a test and you were in the top 16%, you would have above average. So if you go ahead and you take 13 and a half, 2.35 and 0.15, those three sections here, and you add those together, these three sections total 16%. So what was the minimum time of the top 16%? That would be 25 minutes. But remember that these times represent the time it takes to complete a physical fitness obstacle course. And whenever we do a race or an obstacle course, you're generally better 
if you are quicker. So if your time is less. So technically here, the top 16% of people would be below 17 minutes. We wouldn't be able to actually answer this question here with what was the minimum time. We don't know. We wouldn't want to say nine because remember nine is just three standard deviations and there are still 0.15% of values that are below nine. We don't actually know the minimum, but we would be able to say that it's below 17 minutes. So that's it for 11.4 day one. I hope this video helped you review the normal distribution and helped you learn how to divide up that normal distribution and use the values to find percentages. Thanks for watching. Bye.